So what we're working on today is a Bobcat E55. The customer's complaint is all the hydraulics are slow. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and jump in the machine and see what he means by all the hydraulics are slow. And I've already run it one time, so we know that, well, everything indeed is slow, but let's take a look at what we're talking about. So I'm gonna bring the throttle up just a little bit. <clears throat> Okay, I'm gonna try to raise the boom. That's all I got. I mean, that should be going a lot faster than that. <clears throat> it goes down quick, of course, because gravity is pulling that down. <clears throat> and when I talk about gravity, let's take a look at the stick here. See how I'm pulling the stick in and it comes in, but it stops. Now, I still got the joystick held back. Still holding back, still holding back. It just now started to come back, okay? Let's watch that one more time. So I'm going out. You can see how slow it's going out. Let's bring it in. So gravity is pulling that in. Okay, it gets down to its center point. Gravity is no longer pulling it in. I've still got the joystick back, but I'm waiting for something to finally take off and tell it to move. So we see that, the boom, try to move the bucket. Everything is really slow on this machine. <clears throat> So just based off experience, I'm gonna go straight to the pump and I'll explain here in just a minute why. But when we say gravity is pulling that down, cause this is a load sensing pressure compensating pump. So if it doesn't sense a load, of course I pull that joystick back, I'm moving the spool and gravity is just allowing the oil to flow through the cylinder. But there's nothing telling the pump, okay, now I, I request that the stick move, bucket move, so something has to tell that pump to move. So let's walk over here toward the pump and we'll talk about what tells that pump to stroke. And, and this is just what I think based off experience what's going on, but I may be wrong, but this is where I'm gonna start. So I went ahead and removed, you know, this side cover here so I can kind of get access to her pump. Now it's gonna be very difficult to show you exactly what I'm doing. So I'm gonna put a diagram up on the screen and kind of point out where this what I'm looking for is an orifice, and I'll explain in a minute what it does, but this part right here on the pump is called a torque limiter. And below that, again, we can't see it with the camera because it is directly underneath here, but right where my uh, middle finger is moving right there, there's a plug. Behind that plug is what we call a uh, little throttle pintle or a throttle shaft, but what it is is an orifice. So we're looking at a diagram of our pump at partscatalog.bobcat.com. This is where you can find all your parts, but here's a breakdown of the pump. And you can see, I got number 24 highlighted here. We can see that that is a plug. So that's the cap I had to take off to get to 32 and 33. I didn't take out number 34, but number 32, we can hear, see here's that throttle screw, that threaded part that we took off. And then number 33 is the throttle pin. So like I said, this is what we call the orifice and that's what it looks like on the parts diagram. Okay, so how this system works is we move a lever and we have a signal pressure, a load sense pressure that comes back to the pump and says, okay, I'm moving a joystick, I demand flow or pressure. So that signal pressure goes into the pump and it has to move that torque limiter that we were just looking at. But first that oil has to flow through an orifice and usually that works just fine, right? But what happens when we send oil through an orifice, we slow down that flow of oil. And of course we add a little more pressure on the backside of that. So with that oil being slow to that torque limiter, we can't quite move that fast enough. So we got to remove that orifice. So now the oil flows through, it gushes through like a fire hose and actually hits that torque limiter and makes it move to where we can move that swash plate and get more flow. Okay, so here's what we removed from the pump. Now to get the cap off the pump, we used a 3 16 Allen head. So here's that little uh, plug for the throttle and here's what we call the throttle or we, we call it an orifice. And uh, if you can see that there, now my fingers are all in the way, but you can see that hole right there in the middle. That's where the oil is going to flow through from the backside. So anyways, that's what we removed, the throttle pin, throttle cover. We call it an orifice, and we're just going to leave that out. There's no reason we can't leave that out. 
And uh, that's going to allow, like I said, the, the oil to flow into that torque limiter a lot faster to move our swash plate because that torque limiter kind of sticks. And, and this, this is theory behind it is that, that that torque limiter that was back here on the pump is just kind of stuck. We're just not getting enough volume of oil to just hit that thing and get it to move and get that swash plate to move. So that's why we take that out. Rush of oil goes in there and moves that. And then in theory, we should have power. So let's uh, get the machine put together, start it up and see if it works. All right, well, fingers crossed. Let's hope that worked. Okay, machine starting. Bring the throttle up just a little bit. Boom. All right, now look how fast that stick's going. See, it comes all the way in to the relief. So now I'm commanding that to come down. Gravity's not pulling it down. I'm commanding it to come down. So that orifice is what was keeping that thing from stroking. So now everything's working at normal speed. So I guess my, the point behind this video is to show kind of alternative reasons why something might be working. You know, let's say you were to ask this question on Facebook or something like that. What's people gonna ask? Did you change your filters? Has it got hydraulic oil? Crap like that. Unless you're kind of a seasoned Bobcat tech, you probably wouldn't even have known that that orifice is in the pump and that orifice is what was causing that to, uh, that torque limiter not to shift. So, all right, we got this one fixed. Let's go to the next one. Any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.